What's up, Havenites, and welcome to another episode of The Pool List. I'm your boy, Alan. It's my pool list. It's all the stuff that I read every single week. Literally, for those of you that are new to the show, I usually run a week behind because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody that plans on reading stuff. And I also run a week behind because some of these books are still fresh and on the shelf, and you can still get them very easily if you're interested in what I have to say. As far as uh, today's episode is concerned... We got a jam-packed episode. I actually got a Storefolio Plus one. It was another solid week. Tons of books that come out all over the map. Um, loved a lot of what I read this week. Uh, really enjoyed. Had a couple of titles uh, wrap up. Had definitely one wrapped up. But let's just jump right into it. So, I want to set that one off to the side. Um, I don't know if we really need to talk about that when we try to keep it kid friendly. It was, it's just a spawn book. But, right off the bat, we have Dawn of DC Batman issue 138. And basically, we are, this is part four of the Gotham War. And Batman has definitely been taken over by his um, alter ego, his uh, little personality that has in there, Abin Zur, or however you want to say it. Uh, the Bat family does know that there's something wrong with him. He is basically in a full-out fight with the Bat family. But at the same time, you do understand Zur's point that they are allowing crime to happen with allowing Catwoman to basically control the criminals in the streets. This was pretty much just one fight after another. Great stuff. Damien does side with his dad. Uh, that's uh, Honestly, I don't think that that's big of a shock. But he does side with his dad in this. This is just a really good issue. I like what Zdarsky's doing. Uh, the entire Bat family is represented on some level. Um, he knows how to go after everyone. They know how to go after them. So this has been a really good fight so far. I can't wait to see which directions we go in. I had planned on picking up the uh, Catwoman. Um, I guess somebody wanted to get involved in the pool list. Everybody wants their 15 minutes. I had planned on getting the Catwoman um, books for Gotham War, but they kind of sold out before I could get my hands on them. Uh, these, I believe the Batman are a little more easier to get a hold of. It's been a really good story so far. I like what Zdarsky's doing with it. I have really enjoyed it. Next up on my list, we have Godzilla, Here There Be Dragons, issue number four. We do get the fight between Godzilla and the giant lobster, crustacean, crab, whatever you want to call it, lobster. Um, we do get the big fight between them. Uh, it's been a really good point of view. Uh, one thing that did hit me when I was reading this book, though, our pirate was in the cave. He knows what's going on inside the cave while they're trying to get to the treasure, which there is some portrayal and some back tack stabbing that goes on with the treasure and bacon and all them. Sir, Fr I'm Sir Francis Bacon. Um, I believe that's who he's supposed to be. But how does he know what's going on with the fight with Godzilla? Am I just kind of looking too deep into it? That's a possibility, though. This has been a fun read. Very enjoyable. It's Godzilla and Pirates. What's not to like about that? IDW has been a great job. Some beautiful artwork. Uh, just a really fun story so far. I have enjo really enjoyed Godzilla. Here there be dragons. Next up on the list, and... This, I mean, another home run by this company. We have Sins of the Salton Sea, issue number five of five. And the last two pages of this book, I literally sat there and had to, you know, keep going back and forth with it. I was not expecting this ending. I, I mean, completely and totally blown away. The AWA has been really good about putting the trades out. This is a must buy. This is a must read. Um, basically, in this issue, yes, uh, you know, here comes your spoiler alert. Jasper does die um, because we did have a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end of issue four. Jasper does die, and Wyatt is basically going after Cecil. He's going to try to save Silver. He's going to try to save the boy, even though they're still trying to sacrifice Silver to this thing that's in the Salton Sea. We do get a good look at it. Um, think Cthulhu. That's really and truly more along the lines of what it would look like, what it would be. Um, just a great, fantastic issue, but I was not expecting the last two pages. Absolutely blown away. This was a great read. I mean, just 
fantastic. Highly suggest picking up the um, trade for this one. Next up, the Nostalgia Rig, Darkwing Duck, issue number nine. Justice Dogs are getting back together. That's all that really matters. That's why we read this stuff. Basically, they are trying to find, they're still trying to find launch pads, compass, all that good stuff. It's just a fun read. You know, you got to kind of check out from some of the other stuff that we read a lot. Uh, I do recommend this one. This one is a really good one for kids. It's a really good one for if you're a parent that's wanting to read something to your child and just not the normal bedtime stories, things like that. Uh, this is put out by Dynamite Comics, and it's definitely safe for kids. It's definitely safe for the little ones. Fun read, you know, something even if you're trying to get them in the comic books, I do suggest Darkwing Duck. Next up, and I know a lot of people have been waiting on this one. Some people have been saying it's even the most anticipated book of 2023, and that is Transformers issue number one. Um, to be completely and totally honest, yes, I was a Transformers fan when I was a child, but I was more into the Decepticons. Uh, I just liked the jets, you know, the guns, the uh, Soundwave. Soundwave was one of my favorite ones, and so was Starscream. But, um, so I really truly didn't have any expectations going into this, because I never, never really read the comic books. I was more of the cartoon fan when I was younger. But this was a great read. Absolutely fun read. It was. Uh, it did have a nostalgic feel, but it also felt fresh. If you're reading Void Rivals and you're reading this, um, you already see the crossovers in it. You understand why, what's going on. Um, but basically, they are coming back to life. Uh, the uh, Earthlings, humans, they have no idea who the Transformers are. This is kind of a... I'm going to call it a reboot. Call it what you want. I'm just calling it a reboot. I can definitely see where I think they're going to head with uh, bringing G.I. Joe into this and Duke and then the Cobra Commander um, comic. But I think those are supposed to be miniseries, though. But this was actually fun. And for those, uh, for the Daniel Warren fans out there, yes, we did have a suplex. And it was awesome. Um, but... The big shocker, and here it is, and this is a major spoiler that I'm about to throw out there. If you do not want to hear the spoiler, you want to fast forward in three, two, one. Literally, like the third page into it, Bumblebee just gets blown away. He doesn't even get a chance to be kind of resurrected by the Energon, or how you want to say it. Um, that was extremely shocking, and I thought that it was great. And here's the reason why I thought it was great. Don't be thinking I'm hating on Bumblebee. I kind of am, but not really. We have had so much Bumblebee over the years. Um, with all the Michael Bay films, you know, the, just all the movies, it was like Bumblebee, Bumblebee, Bumblebee. I thought it was a good idea to basically take him off the board literally in the first issue. Um, Optimus does get away with a lot of the Autobots as they're starting to come back online. And they are basically running. They do have some new human allies. Very well done. I love the art in it. I thought the art was great. This was, honestly, I think it was worth the wait. I cannot wait to see where they actually go with this series and how they're going to bring Duke and the, um, all the rest of the Joes in it. I know that... Larry Hama's uh, G.I. Joe 301, I believe, is still going to be its own little independent thing. They're going to just let him continue creating in the universe that he literally created himself. So that was uh, Transformers. It was a great run. Can't wait to see that fella show up right there. I am extremely looking forward to that. But it's coming soon. We're getting closer and closer to the Joes coming back. And I know that's going to make a lot of Haven Heights happy. Next up, we have Fantastic Four, issue number 12. This was a very, very fun issue. It was a kind of a goofy issue. It was fun, though. I really did enjoy it. Basically, what happens is that, um, the Fantastic Four end up in like this mist thing. They get sucked into it. They get drawn into a parallel universe where everything happened in the parallel universe that happened in ours except everyone's dinosaurs. It's the dinosaurs are the ones that evolved and everything. And they're not like lizard people running around. Some of y'all get that reference. 
Right. They're not like them running around. They are literally dinosaurs, oversized, you know, big dinosaurs like we would think, except they're the heroes. They do have to overcome a language barrier. They do have to work together. It was kind of a cool moment because uh, Ben and everyone, they get to meet their dinosaur version of their kids, and so they get to talk to them and stuff. It was kind of a cool little moment. Um, they are getting ready to get transported back. They think they found a way back, and then Dinosaur Doom shows up. And in the preview, or like one little page that you have, is literally Doom riding Dinosaur Doom. How awesome is that? So next issue should be pretty fun. This will be one that I think they can wrap up fairly quick. Fantastic for Ryan North. You know, For those of y'all that watch Shop Talk on Thursday nights with Josh and myself, We've got nothing but high praise for Ryan North. I mean, he's done an amazing job, and he's truly brought the Fantastic Four back to being a family of adventurers like he said they were. And Fantastic Four has got all the hallmarks to being a cornerstone Marvel book again. It really does. Thoroughly enjoyed uh, Fantastic Four by Ryan North. I've not read out of all 12 issues that he's done so far, I have not read one bad issue. I mean, they it's literally it's worth the read. It's worth picking up. Next up, we have by IDW The Rocketeer Den of Thieves, issue number 3. Cliff Secord, they him and Betty, they have made it over to I believe Germany and they are going um they're going in on the rescue mission. Betty's going to help him. She would not let him go alone. They do have a lot of... Um, <clears throat> basically, in this issue, they're really and truly getting over there. There is a game plan. Betty does get in. Betty gets in on the action. She gets into a fight. Uh, one cool thing about this issue... And for those of you that are reading The Rocketeer, you know that it's just been fun. I mean, it's just it's really been fun. It's It's got the right feel. It's got the right touch. Art's great. Story's good. It's exactly what you would want it to be. One thing at the end of it, though, is when the Nazi versions of the Rocketeers show up, um, or however they want to call them, there was a female with like a trench coat, and the design of that just looked great. Uh, so in issue four, we should have our Rocketeer going against Nazi Rocketeers, which should be a lot of fun. It's... Once again, it's a break from what we normally read. It's a break from the superheroes, you know, the sword, the sorcery, the sci-fi. Like, yeah, kind of sci-fi. But it's still, it's a nice break from it. And it still, to me, feels like the movie that come out in the, um, I believe in the early 90s. So this was Rocketeer, issue number three, uh, Den of Thieves. Just a fun read. I don't know how... I'm pretty sure IDW does trades of these when they're done with them. I don't know how many issues this one's actually going to be. It's a quick Google search, but... Um, I do suggest it. If you just want something fun, just a little bit offbeat from what we normally cover and what we normally read as comic book nerds, it's a, definitely, a, a definitely a good book to uh, pick up if you need a break from the norm. Next up, we have Darth Vader, Dark Droids. This is issue number 39. We're still pushing right along with the Dark Droids saga. That's still all going on. <clears throat> um, I'm still... I stand by what I've been saying. I think they're going to push this thing to about 50 issues, and then we'll actually get to Jedi, or uh, Return of the Jedi. Um, but basically, in this one, Vader does what Vader does. Except in this one, he does have full control of the Force again. He finally realizes who he truly hates the most. And as he puts it, hate leads to power. And he's got his power back. Vader does what Vader does. He shows up, he just takes out everybody, and then he moves on. Just another fun read. I'm, I'm not trying to take anything away from it. I'm not trying to blow past it. I do believe that Darth Vader is the best Star Wars title going uh, and it has been for a long time. I am going to hate to see the end of this series. I do feel like they can continue Darth Vader after Return of the Jedi. It would just be a different type of series. Um, you know, almost like a... Uh, for those of you old heads that have been around like I have, remember the Star Wars, uh, classic Star Wars? Things like that. They could kind of do something like that, I think. Um, next up, we have... The Devil That Wears My Face. This is a Mad Cave Studios. This was a number one, and it literally just came out last week. 
Very interesting premise. Uh, this is a really good read since we're in the Halloween season. I do suggest picking it up. It'll go beyond the Halloween season, but if you're into horror and you're into that stuff, this was actually very intriguing. Basically, we have a exorcist that they have sent, uh, the Vatican has sent on a mission to Spain, and the reason why they've sent him is this uh, guy's son has been possessed, and this guy had made a fortune mining silver, and they feel like he could be a very powerful ally. But once our exorcist gets there, he realized this is no average demon. This is no average possession. Uh, there's actually been several priests that were murdered trying to exorcise this demon. Um, and he ends up going back to the Vatican. And he ends up telling them, hey, look, you know, we got a big issue. But here comes the twist. The demon, pretty much the devil, actually jumped out of the body that it was possessing and jumped into the priest's body and basically switched. So now the priest is inside of the body that everybody thinks is possessed and he's trying to convince them that he's really the priest while the devil is walking around with his body, walking around with his face. And that's the devil that wears my face. That was a really good twist. Uh, I mean, I really enjoyed this one. If you're wanting something for the Halloween season, I pick it up. I mean, it was a great read. Uh, Y'all know I love my independence. I love AWA. I love Mad Cave. And this is another reason why I love Mad Cave so much. Uh, just like Sins of the Salt and Sea was a reason why I love AWA so much. But just a, a great read. And a number, literally, number one. You got no excuses. You can't sit there and say that you're too far behind. This is number one. And really good art, too. Next up, I picked this up. Actually, I went through these a little bit quicker than I thought I would. Um, I went through... Um, I picked this one up just because I am a fan of this guy's music. I know he's been a little bit controversial here lately uh, with some of the things that he said. I don't care about that. This is about the comic books, and that's really and truly what I care about. So here we go. We have Alice Cooper by Dynamite. This is issue number one. This was actually a pretty fun read. Uh, the entire... I had no expectations going into it. Didn't know what it was supposed to be about. But basically, the devil has put on a concert in hell. And the people that are there are famous musicians. It's like a it's like crossroads, bar, and grill, pub, whatever. Um... But the musicians that are there tell them, you know, that's great. We're always going to clap and cheer for you. But the real deal is you got to get the love and the admiration in the real world. That's where it's really about. That's what you really want. You got to be able to feel that. So the devil hates competition. And what he does is, and it was kind of cool because you start seeing all these bands and everything. And you can pick out who's who. He starts kidnapping, he has demons kidnap the lead singers of every single band, so he's kind of the only one. Well, we kind of go through this thing where um, when we get to Alice Cooper, he's kind of, you know, he's tired, he's older, uh, you know, uh, he's you know just put out a new album, Slumping Sales. He does talk about that it's the same old people at the concerts all the time, but he's kind of having like these visions, and he sees... Um, it looks like zombies at the concerts. Well, an angel does show up in a dream and basically tells him, hey, you kind of walk in both worlds. You're touched by the light and you're touched by the dark. This is what's fixing to happen, and you're the one that's got to take him out. You're the one that's got to basically restore order. The, ga the angel is Gabriel. Cool premise, fun book. I think it falls right along the lines of other Dynamite books that they've done, You know, kind of like the Kiss series, all the Kiss books that they've done over the years. I definitely want to pick up the next one. I, it's just fun, and it's Alice Cooper. I mean, what's not to love about Alice Cooper? Next up, and this one got a touch weird, and I like a touch weird. We have Alien Annual Number 1, and I'm going to butcher his name once again, and I'm so sorry. Chalavet, I believe is how you say his last name. He is who's been writing the Alien series. And yes, this is an annual, so it's a one shot. But for those of you that are reading it, you know, please drop me a comment and everything, because this one kind of 
I, I'm just going to show y'all so y'all will know exactly what I'm talking about. When you, every Alien book that has been put out since um, Disney has pretty much acquired everything, Marvel's acquired it all, y'all notice we've got the 20th Century Studios logo up here now. But every single Alien book, you know, we kind of get a couple of pages, blah, 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 blah. We got some art. That's not what I'm wanting to show y'all. We've got this page right here. And it tells us all about Waylon Yuta and all that. A lot of times, to be honest with y'all, I don't even read this page anymore. Because I know pretty much it's a little bit of a recap. And that's about it. But over here on this other page, I just happened to glance over and I noticed this. And this right here is basically a report of host variation concerning the xenomorph Fiornis 161. And it was notes from a recording. And it's literally just one paragraph that talks about that they've noticed that the xenomorphs, facehuggers, have actually mutated with other species, which was different. And they did note a canine. And that the xenomorphs that were produced from that had more canine-like qualities well, in this entire issue, it is, that is the only words in this issue. The rest of it is a silent issue. And it's literally a war between xenomorphs as we know them and these canine-looking xenomorphs. Now, they're still alien. They still look, you know, the way they should look. They just have more, you know, dog-like qualities uh, or possibly even wolf-like qualities. And we do see a little bit, I believe it's supposed to be the L whatever number, the frozen moon. And we see another mutation at the end of it. It was a little weird, it was a little funky, and it was a little cool, and I loved it a lot. If you're an Alien fan, pick it up. I mean, it's literally, you flip through it. You'll blaze through every single picture in here in about five minutes, and you can go back through and look at them again. Because it does tell a really good story with a silent issue. And it's just the war between two different Xenomorphs. Next up, and last on our list, we have Conan the Barbarian, issue number three by Titan Comics. So, Conan has made it down into... Um, I've done forgot her name. Just complete and total blank. So unprofessional. That's me. Um, Y'all aren't watching this for the professional aspect of it. But Conan and his accomplice, we're going to call her that until I can find her name right quick, they have made it down into the chambers. They are about to free uh, Conan's people. And um, they're getting ready to go after basically the cult and everything. Where are we at? Where are we at? Brissa. B-R-I-S-S-A. So I'm going to pronounce it Brissa. Um, for those of you that have not picked up a Conan book and you're kind of wor um, wondering about the art, that's kind of what you get. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like the old Prince Valiant comic strips for the old folks. Um, but they have made their way down into the, uh, the catacombs. They freed Conan's people. They're getting ready. It's one big massive fight and... Briss is trying to save the elderly and the infirmed, basically. Uh, she promised that she would get them out. She is a pick warrior, and she's getting ready to go back in to help Conan and the others. And from that point on, it's she's trying to get back in as Conan and the others pretty much go into just full-on rage and berserk. They're wanting to end all of it. And Conan does fall into what looks like the River Styx with a um, all the souls. Uh, he knows that he cannot save their souls, so he just kind of falls into it. Um, he was fighting with someone. I don't want to kind of ruin who, but it, another good issue, another solid outing. I am enjoying what Titan is doing with uh, Conan, and I've never really been that big of a Conan fan to begin with, other than the movies with Schwarzenegger, which who doesn't love those? Um, but it's another good, another solid read, and it's you know, a break from superheroes. So you just can't go wrong with that. That's it for the pool list. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for a cool playlist with other reviews of comics and stuff that I've done over the past several weeks, you can check right there. There'll probably be another cool video posted right there. And if you're watching for the first time and you see that little circle with the logo right there, click on that thing and I'll see y'all next week.